Hey everyone, AmtrakGuy365 here, and today on this edition of Engines of Amtrak, I'll be discussing the EMD F69PHAC and its experience with the German ICE high-speed train set. Today we're going back to 1989. Up to this point, American diesel locomotives were powered through means of direct current, or DC, as opposed to alternating current, or AC. The simple difference being with DC, electricity only flows in one direction, whereas AC will flow in more than one direction. In June of 1989, General Motors Locomotive Group, Siemens, and Amtrak were about to conduct an experiment. Wanting to test the viability of an AC-powered locomotive, the F69PH AC was born as the first AC traction locomotive for North American markets. Two of them, to be specific. Using a modified F40PH car body, these locomotives were essentially an F59PH with AC power. They used two state-of-the-art three-phase traction converters and then a third inverter to supply power to passenger cars. The technical specs were as follows. The F stands for full width cowl body, 69 for the model number, P for passenger gearing, H for being equipped with head and power, and AC for being powered through alternating current traction motors. They were rated for a top speed of 110 miles an hour being powered by an EMD 710G 312 cylinder engine producing 3000 horsepower. The locomotives weighed in at 262,000 pounds. They come in at a length of 58 feet 2 inches, a width of 10 feet 3 inches, and a height of 15 feet 7.5 inches. The F69s were equipped with head-end power using an 800 kilowatt HEP inverter. The units were equipped with Nathan K5LA air horns. Here's what they sounded like. The duo were numbered 450 and 451 and first used by the United States Department of Transportation and extensively tested in Pueblo, Colorado. Later in the fall of 1990, 450 and 451 released out to Amtrak for additional revenue service test runs. In doing that, they were painted into Phase 3. Both units were placed on short and long distance trains alike and proved to accelerate rather quickly with their trains. Oftentimes as well, a dynamometer car would be placed on the test runs to monitor performance. Throughout 1990, the units racked up thousands of miles in Amtrak service until being sent back to EMD in LaGrange, Illinois in 1991. They would, however, reappear a bit in Amtrak service during 1992. Meanwhile, Amtrak was looking for a viable high-speed train set for their Northeast Corridor. This would result in a visit from Europe in the form of two high-speed train sets. These were the Swedish X2000 and the German Intercity Express 1, better known as ICE-1. These tours deserve their own video, so I won't be going into too much detail about them. Anyway, between June and December of 1993, the ICE would conduct revenue test runs on the Northeast Corridor along with touring the United States for promotional and demonstration purposes. Both F-69 units would power the train set throughout the rest of the country, which lacked any overhead wires. The units were additionally painted up in a unique ICE livery for the 25-city trip. Both units were quite fitting for the train as well, given the ICE was built by Siemens, of which the F-69s were as well. The tour was received quite well, with onlookers and passengers being rather impressed. On December 17th, the tour and demo runs were completed and the train set would be returned back to Germany. This ultimately, though, would be the F-69 Duo's final assignment. The units were returned to EMD shortly thereafter for more presumable tests. Several years later in 1999, they were retired and then sold off to National Railway Equipment in Mount Vernon, Illinois. They were stripped of numerous parts and may or may not be scrapped in the future. Information on their current status is very limited, so I'm not sure exactly what condition they're in right now. While Amtrak didn't take the F-69 and run with it as their own locomotive, it at least paved the way for future AC locomotive development like the EMD SD60 Mac, proving the reliability of EMD's AC traction system. This would then lead to engines like the SD70 Mac, being the first successful AC traction diesel locomotive in North America. On the competing side, there was GE's AC4400 CW, and soon enough, almost all future American diesel locomotives would use AC traction. Also, the F69's cab design would be reused on Metra's F40PHM-2s, first introduced in 1991. Amtrak, in the end, proved to be more of a catalyst for testing the F69's performance. Regardless, even if the F69PHACs didn't last long with Amtrak, they'll always remain a part of the history book of Amtrak, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation. 
Thanks for watching this episode of Engines of Amtrak. Sorry this one was a little bit shorter, there really wasn't a whole lot of information on this engine to be honest, considering it didn't really last long with the railroad. Either way, stay tuned for next time when I rediscuss the Acela Express. I hope you all enjoyed, and thank you again for watching.